There we go. Ooh, kind of dark. Kind of dark here. Oh, it, it was the monitor. <laughs> oh, man. I got this technology thing going on. How was everybody today? Uh, I turned the video resolution down to 720 because there's this guitar thing here. I've been playing with the guitar to see if I could get some uh, some sounds. We'll see. We'll see if the uh, upload rate remains uh, critically terrible. Well, maybe we'll get there. Um, so today's live stream is brought to you with the support of you, uh, the friends of five watt on Patreon. Uh, I'm pounding to try to get ready to go away next month. So there will still be videos for you guys to watch while I'm gone. Uh, does anyone remember Telly Savalas? You know, the TV show Kojak um, from the seventies He used to say, who loves you, baby? Who loves you, baby? It's me. Uh, I'll be taking a break from live streaming a little bit around my birthday. Um, and uh, I'll be on airplanes and traveling places and filming, um, getting doing some filming, obviously, uh, maybe get some some sunshine. That stuff they call sunshine. We don't really know a lot about it that here in Syracuse. Uh, but I will do some live streaming from there when I get set up in Spain. Uh, actually, next week, I'm going to switch to running the channel from my laptop and um, my iPhone as my webcam. So this could be really fun here next week. Don't miss it next week. Uh, so uh, you can you can laugh with me, at me, whatever. I'm here for you, as I just said to Lyle. Um, today is all about questions from you. Uh, I never do these traditional Q and A. You know, like brave people like Lyle or Jeff. You know, right in the chat, ask about questions. You know, and everything. Uh, so uh, today we're doing that. Put your questions in the chat, and uh, we're going to get there. Uh, so we're going to have that. Uh, Beve is here. Uh, our good man, Beve, uh, moderating like a pro that he is. And uh, we're very glad to have him. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll talk a little bit about where I'm going to be. And um, yeah, anyway, uh, the playing in the intro, of course, was John Cordy from the top 10 SG players video. Uh, it was too good not to reuse. Um, I might have to turn the lights up here a little bit. I guess again, it's the monitor. Uh I put a video this morning called Great Guitars That Suck to Own. Um, I got to own this right up front. There's a there's a guy, I, I recently got into watches. And the funny part is I have one. I have a watch collection. <laughs> is that five watt world or what? Uh, and, and Lyle's into watches too. So we've actually, from Cyanic Audio, so we've been exchanging information. Um, I, I'm fascinated by any collecting world. Um, and it's interesting to me, the parallels in different types of collecting. I've talked about this in the last few um, live streams that we did. That video idea, like another one I did already recently, uh, kind of came from the watch world where somebody did, you know, like famous, famous watches that sort of suck to own. There's watches that cost, literally just to get the thing service cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You know, everybody dreams of a Rolex when in fact, you know, you couldn't, I couldn't afford to get the thing, you know, repaired or regularly serviced and these things need regular service. Um, so, you know, that just, that alone felt like a big parallel. And so I just took the outline, uh, of kind of the way did it. And I went, oh, well that applies to guitars. That applies to guitars. And then I wrote a whole section that was uh, how that goes. I actually thought about calling it guitars that sort of suck to own, you know, soften it a little bit. And, uh, and Rick was like, oh, no, 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 no. So, um, so, uh, we, we went with the full title and it's working out. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that already. Um, and then twice a year, I run twice a year. I run a twenty percent off sale at the merch store, and that's running from today, fourteenth of March. I don't know when you're watching this. The fourteenth of March, it'll be running till this time next week. Uh, so for a week, and uh, we have. Let me get them out here. People have been asking about these because they haven't been in the store in a long time. Uh, guitar nerd T-shirts. They say guitar nerd, and then a little bitty five watt world underneath. Yeah, the guitar nerd thing became. I became aware of it when Pete Thorne. Uh, used to, you know, had an album called, has a, has an album, his first solo record, maybe his only, I don't know, um, called Guitar Nerd. And I reached out to him, I'm like, dude, that's gold. You should make a shirt. He's like, yeah, I don't really do shirts. I'm like, okay, well, I'll do a shirt. So there's in two types there, you can see there's light on dark and black on light. That's the idea. Um, so uh, that's twice a year. Uh, there's lots of other merch there. Although I did kind of clean the store out of stuff that wasn't selling. Um, like I said, I just brought those back by popular request. Check the descriptions for t-shirts, hoodies, hats, 
Also, the 5 Watt World Barber Electronics Bus Pedals is there as well. Um, we're through another batch of 50, or pretty close to it. Somebody from Australia, a store in Australia. David doesn't really use many dealers anymore, but he has a dealer in Australia that bought 10 of them. And then and somebody walked into the store and asked about them again. So that's pretty cool. Um, I wanted to mention uh, here a thank you to uh, Dan Steinhardt. Uh, I used, if you haven't watched the video, I used Dan Steinhardt from That Pedal Show as an example of somebody who actually uses abuses no <laughs> uses actually uses their guitars um and uses them thoroughly and i loved it uh so yeah um so i reached out to dan he sent me his pictures of the guitar from the beginning of the channel and and at the end and he didn't get them quite to me in time but i'd actually used a bunch of that i already found online pictures of him you know with the guitar all skinned up and laughing on that pedal show with their you know official photograph i think it is probably um but anyway dance dance the best all right, let's do some questions today. This is all about questions today. I'm gonna go back um, to the beginning of the chat. So I do these in order that they came through. Uh, I think we covered the, uh, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen sparrow? Um, <laughs> Kurt Schaffenberg immediately jumped in with that one. Answer, that's from um, Monty Python uh, and the Holy Grail. Uh, let's see. Day. Somebody put in the chat here pretty early about getting his carbon amplifier repaired. And I'll let Lyle jump in the chat. I don't, I mean, my my limited experience of sitting next to Dan Lurie uh, while he would fix any manner of things that would come through the shop. And the reality is the early, you know, the carbon's a company's been around forever. I mean, forever since the 50s. Um, and then they changed he changed the name when you know he took it over. But um, the old carbons are eminently workable. I don't know about the new ones, how, how they've kind of changed, but Lyle, I'm sure has seen them. Um, <laughs> people are here for the first time. All right. So, uh, let me get some room here so I can display these as they go. Oh, wrong one. There we go. I don't know how to pronounce that. The Wood Shack, I think, 503. Keith, what's your opinion of the base six? And we do a short history on it. I dig the beard, thanks. Uh, I, I actually, it's on the list. I have a spreadsheet. I say this periodically. I have a spreadsheet of about 130 video topic, potential video topics. I actually had people like Zach Childs and some, um, and, uh, some other folks uh, rank them for me, things that they would like to see. And so I'm kind of working my way through the biggest ones. Um, the top SG ones are there. There's a video idea that I got from a student at Middlebury College when I went and did a talk there about the history of guitars. They have a course there um, taught by a good friend of mine and on the history of, I think it's called History of the Electric Guitar in Popular Culture. And it's a straight up history course. And you can imagine that enrolls pretty heavily. Um, I think they think it's going to be a, a walk in the park when in fact there's lots to learn. But I went there and a student said, what's the most important moment in guitar history. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's a great video topic. I'm going to take that. I have his name. I'll give him credit when it comes around to making it, but I will be making a, a base six video. You know, in the meantime, Zach Childs did a great video. Um, Zach's videos are less formal than mine, you know, less images, but I think he did add some images to that. And he did a really good video on uh, the base six. So we'll check that out. It's good to see that uh, Noise Bloom knew the Telly Savalas quote. a boy. I don't th I think that show was on. I wasn't supposed to, I wasn't supposed to be up watching that. <laughs> uh, my birthday is April 1st. And if your birthday is April 1st as a child, you get pretty defensive about it. So like, I'm going to leave the continent this year uh, to get around it. Um, Dave says Spain. All right. So I'm going to be in Barcelona for uh, the majority of April. Um, I actually connected with Mary Spender through Rick, um, and I'm hoping, you know, she's going to kind of show us around town, but at the same time, um, my partner knows the town real well. So she's going to, um, ferry us around as well. Um, maybe I'll get to make a video with Mary. Maybe I'll sing. God help us all. Anyway. Um, let's see here. Joe. Uh, I'm not going, Joe says, finally going to Paris. I've been to Paris twice, Joe. Uh, do I talk a lot about it? Um, 
I'm gonna probably go back in the fall if I can, uh, if I keep having popular videos, if I have unpopular videos, I won't be going back to Paris in the fall. In the meantime, I'll keep baking my bread. Uh, no, Joe wants to know, and everybody can answer this for Joe. Joe wants to know, should he be ashamed of how much he loves his fractal? I don't think so. If you've learned to, if you've learned to program your fractal, you've earned it. That's my opinion. Um, it's not my birthday yet, Mike. It's not my, but thank you, but it's not my birthday yet. And actually, I don't rush them at this point in my life. I don't rush birthdays. I'm fine letting them come quietly up, sneak up on me on their own. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Misham, top, tap us. Uh, I, as you can see, I turned off the slow mode at the advice of Lyle. Um, so people can just wade right in there. Um, was 12 string guitars on the list of guitars that suck to own? I thought that 12 strings were sort of, it's, it's sort of like, you know, picking on the nerd. It's kind of the low hanging fruit. And having been a nerd, um, I, I'm not down with that. So I didn't do 12 strings. And also my first real good guitar was a 12 string. Um, that acoustic Epiphone, it played great actually. And I didn't really have a lot of problems um, with tuning it and stuff. There's the joke, you know, that you spend half the time playing and half the time tuning. All right, Kerf wants to know, best, best live guitar programs I ever saw. Oh, is this a question? <laughs> What's my favorite? So that he says 1973, April Led Zeppelin in Fort Worth. Wow. Um, not the best, uh, best guitar. Well, the first rock concert I ever went to see was um, I saw Kansas on the Left Overture tour. So I was maybe not supposed to be driving at night, but I drove to Rochester and saw him at the Landmark Theater with a friend of mine, Jack Fratangelo. Um, but that wasn't the best show I'd ever seen. I, mean, I used to often say that the only good thing about being as old as I am is that I got to see some really great music back in the day. I saw Genesis um, on the tour they did that ended that ended with the Seconds Out recording. Um, I saw Billy Joel right after, and you guys can tease me, that's fine, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I saw Billy Joel on the tour right after The Stranger came out. But I also saw Miles Davis twice, and I saw Ray Charles. Um, boy, those are, it's tough to come up with just one. Um, so I talked about this. The reason my knees hurt, I, the reason I have, I got a, uh, a watch is to try to carry my phone around less because when I pick up the phone, I start doing everything that my phone does. So I'm, I, I have lousy, uh, discipline when it comes to things like that. So. <laughs> that's funny I, I think it's uh they're pretty slippery slope there christopher so yeah 20 percent off merch the merch company and i split uh the discount and uh they're very cool about it and and baby's like on cue he's right there so 25, 20 percent of all the different merch, and I actually added the traditional pullover hoodie, not just the zip hoodie, back, and then I added the guitar nerd shirts that everybody's asking. I took away some stuff that people weren't buying, but um, uh, Bino wants to know if there's a plan to do an MPEG SVT. You know, bass videos, bass amp, bass guitar videos. Um, I'm actually, st I just started writing the script for the top 10 Fender jazz bass players that changed the world. And I, I mean, one of the best concerts I ever saw and Beata was there, though we didn't know each other because it was like, I was in college, he's two years younger than me, he was still in high school, was I saw a weather report in Rochester, New York at the Eastman Theater, uh, 1979 with Jocko. And he played, um, a, he did a solo thing and he played Purple Haze all by himself with an echoplex making a and then he just, -da -da -da. I mean, just killer. I, that, that might actually be the big moment. So. On the Road Again says, it's funny, I was just working on that song for my acoustic jam this weekend. What's the most you've ever got stung on a guitar resale? <laughs> what, you want me to cry? <laughs> huh. It's funny, I, you know, I don't, I usually buy pretty low. I buy used. Um, so I would, it's probably something I bought new. 
um, I usually do pretty well. And when I, when I do lose money, so I just sold the Collings guitar. Um, and I have the guys at Ish do my sales uh, for me because it just saves a lot of time and it gives me a little space, you know, from, from uh, the whole process, the eBay process, the reverb process. Um, and I lost about $300 plus the commission that, that they take at Ish, which is very reasonable. Guys are great. Um, I think of that as, um, as learning. I think of it as tuition. Uh, when I have like a, a piece, when I lose a piece of guitar like that, uh, I was fine. Um, so thank you, Veronica. We're, we'll do a stream. I think I'm planning, I've got this schedule here. I think I'm planning to do a stream on the fourth, which is when my mom's birthday is. She's going to be 87. Um, so, uh, so it'll be right. It'll be a lot closer to my birthday and I'll be, hopefully I've gotten some sun by then. Then Lyle, of course, I knew Lyle could give us an answer about carbons. Ah, that's a little, that's, that's sad to hear. Thanks for covering that, Lyle. I knew you could and I couldn't. Desert Island Base. So, you know, I had a pair uh, when I had too many guitars, two of the too many guitars I had were a pair of Dan Electro Longhorn short scale basses. And I had one with flats and one with round. Uh, I couldn't play bass for crap, <laughs> like most good guitar players or most guitar players, like, you know, we, we can't play bass. I saw recently uh, a Mayone's um, baby bass and it's like, it's like this big and they make them out of scrap wood from the regular bass process. There's everything about this I love. They're too grand, but I wondered if I could reach out to Mayone's, they do them. And now they're, they're actually tuned like a regular guitar, but they have a Bartolini pickup in them and everything. Um, and I wondered if I could get a deal on one and I would just use it with, and it sounds like a bass, you know, it sounds like you're soloing up high on a bass and there's nothing like the sound of a bass up high like that. Um, so I love that. Um, so I think that might, something short scale, uh, a short scale five string. I'm a big Yannick Guizala fan. I'm a huge fan of Yannick's work. And, um, I love the uh, five string that's, you know, with a high string, you know, E through C. Uh, I love that sound. Um, it could be in the category of, uh, I don't need to own everything that's beautiful. That's something I keep saying to myself. I, I should put that on a shirt, even if I'm the only one who buys one. I actually bought myself a new tube shirt. Uh, I don't want to get too weird, but I, I have my five watt because I, I was doing the merch photos earlier today. Got my five watt shirt on. Um, so that's the, that's the base answer. Opinion on Gibson doing things like today's announcement of a Jimmy Page double neck, $50,000 a piece. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I've had a busy day. Uh, I did not hear that. Um, I can hear Jeff Macrolane all the way from Brooklyn to Syracuse right now going, it's a new guitar. <laughs> it's not even an old guitar. Um, I think that, I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's a new guitar. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I can't see it. I, I can't see it. Those the double necks are too much anyway. And um, somebody was saying in the comments on the guitars that suck to own. I mean, they're too heavy to play. And I can only imagine how heavy they'd be. Well, maybe they've squirreled away a lot of really light mahogany, but um, that's a crazy thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have a, a direct connection with anybody right now uh, at Gibson. And I'm okay with that. I, I, you know, I got my, uh, my Collings back there. I got my Rev Star right here. I'm going to be okay. Metalhead Blues do, said, do I have any seven strings? I don't have any seven strings, but I have had guitars um, that were specifically set aside and tuned at, uh, like down at C sharp. Um, it's partly a Joey Landreth thing. Um, partly, um, yeah, the Strandberg guys. Um, I, I would like to noodle with an eight string. But it'd be just that. It'd be me noodling with an eight string. Doug Peterson says, long time, first time. Hey, okay. What is the most rock and roll guitar ever? And why is it a Les Paul with zebra? Because... <laughs> so you ask a question and answer it. That's my favorite. Uh, I think that could be the answer. I think that I think a Les Paul slung low, right up there with a V, uh, you know, a real 58 V. I had a really good conversation with um. Oh, I'm going to blank out his name now. He was the first guy that was ever hired by the Gibson Custom Shop 
and I haven't talked to him in about four or five years now, but when I did the V video, when I did the Karina guitar videos, I was talking to him and he was just talking about like a Karina guitar with the strings through body and the, you know, the sort of arrow bridge. He, he made, he actually was a just custom builder, obviously he retired from Gibson, but he swore and he made, um, he would make juniors, one pickup P90 juniors with that bridge setup. And he's like, there's just something about that. So, um, I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty tough one. Wow. Jared wants to know what would you consider to be the most fulfilling endeavor of your career? If not, <laughs> would you consider this? Oh, this to be the most fulfilling. You mean a Q and A, a live stream Q and A? Um, I do love these. I uh, this is a treat for me. I'll admit, after a, a day of trying to do a ton of administrative stuff, um, I actually did a project in when I was in higher education um, that was the most meaningful thing because it made a lot of students safer and it had to do with like people being able to choose their own names. And I don't want to get in to the politics of whatever your opinions are about all that kind of stuff. Um, but I felt very good about that project. And I have to say that I, um, it also was like my three minutes of fame. It, it wasn't 15 minutes like Warhol said, but it was three minutes. And I was interviewed by the New York times about why we did the project and all this kind of stuff. And, um, it, it was sort of a capstone for my career because like this, like Leo Fender, I would say, here you go. How's that for pulling it back to the channel? Um, I think that the, that the best work is always done when you're listening to the users. And I actually did panel discussions and stuff and people on those panels, they're like, you know, you're a straight white guy in a tie. How did you know how to help these LGBTQ students, you know, with this issue? And I'm like, easy. I listened to what they wanted. So, um, I think that's really the key for whether you're a custom builder or you're, you know, doing a big project on some campus someplace, just find the people that need it um, and then do what they say. So that's a nice question, Jared. Thanks. Uh, let's see. People talking about New Hampshire. Avi from Paris. Avi, if I come and fall, I will see you, my friend. Avi Eckhart giving me a bonjour from Paris. Oh, people are starting to chime in and give me the answer to the most important moment in guitar history. That's a good one. That's a pretty tough one. <laughs> Thanks for that vote of confidence, Kev. I'll play. Mary, Mary's a pretty good guitar player. Yeah, so that's not fair. Um, Eric's back. Eric Worthington. All right. <laughs> Okay, if you know if you don't get that, even with the spelling, uh, that's that's pretty funny. It's the Jeff and Lyle show again this week. I think that's probably why he came back for Lyle. Have you ever done a video about guitars by independent builders? You know, it's funny. Um, you talking about this watch channel, this guy Teddy Baldassar. That's just just such great content. He, he did that video where he's talking about kind of like I did about independent builders. And he also then did like two years later, he did a video about um, sort of young, small watch companies to, to watch, you know, sorry, that was bad. Uh, young watch companies that he thought were doing really interesting things. And, um, and I thought, huh, that would be an interesting video, you know, especially coming out of this video. Cause I meant it when I said it in the video, if you, if you watched already, I say that, um, you know, some of my best friends are custom guitar builders or own small gu guitar companies. And I think that, um, uh, there's just so much to be said for custom work and all of those kinds of things that it would be an interesting thing. Um, and I wonder if it would get dated because, but there's so many good people like K-Line and, uh, and Ola at Strandberg. I mean, just amazing. So. Uh, we're going to do a whole live stream some week on, um, uh, on my Levin, uh, French bread making, cause I bake my own bread every week. So we'll do that cheese pizza. you you can reach out to me and I'll, I'll share my address, my, um, not my address, but I'll share my recipe. Uh, Dave says it didn't, the link didn't work. Is it chopped? Uh, if you just do, um, uh, five watt world store or just five watt world.com, there's a link directly to the store. So you can get there from there. Um, sometimes the browser doesn't put the whole thing there. Um, so history on flamenco guitars, acoustic guitar videos in general are like bass videos in that they do well over the long term, 
but not in the short term. Uh, Chris Martin from Martin Guitars is going to be in town because his daughter goes to Syracuse University. So Ish is going to have like a, a Martin Monday. I don't. I hope I didn't just steal their thunder, but they're going to do it next month sometime. And I might be involved. I don't know if they do a live stream. Maybe I'll come down and MC it or something. But it's it's right after I get back. It's right in the beginning of May. Um, so. Oh, there you go, Rob. Rob's getting points. Wife's birthday today. a boy. Happy birthday. Aaron says, I don't understand why people don't learn to work on their own guitars. I'm a player because of my work on my guitars. Many of the friends. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. Um, part of it is time. Um, I think that is a lot of it. Joel says, the answer, I'm not sure the answer to which question, Joel, of the question is, I think the answer to the question is Les Paul and Mary Ford. Tenuous answer, but the only one I can think of. Does that seem justified? I'm not sure what you're answering, my friend. Favorite guitar in your five in my collection, five watt. I'm going to do a status of the collection of the guitar collection video like I did the pedals. Maybe I'll do it as a live stream because, you know, some of these things um, are sort of better at this scale. Um, I don't have a lot of guitars again now. Um, my favorite looking guitar is that Collings. My favorite playing guitar is probably, and every time I say this, David Barber, you know, like yells at me because he says, I'm going to, I'm going to like dry up the market for us. Um, is uh, my PR, PRS, 2010 PRS Mira X. It weighs five and a half pounds. It has uh, Ron Ellis, um, Leroy Parnell special pickups, which are modeled after Dwayne Allman's pickups. It's got eights on it. It plays like nothing, just butter. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah. You guys are doing great with the, pick, the questions. I was worried about you. Uh, what's a band that you like that might surprise us? Um, well, I, I've been pretty open about being a, a jazz guy for a long time. So none of that would surprise you. When I when I kind of rolled out of that, um, I actually took some metal lessons. And the metal guy that I had giving me lessons um, turned me on to a whole bunch of music. And, um, and I do go back to it. Um, but the bands that usually surprise people are Meshuggah and uh, Sepultura. Sepultura is a metal band from South America. Um, those two, I think, are the ones that usually surprise people that I, I still like. I don't listen to them now, though, so so much. Um, but Meshuggah was a really important band for me at one time. So, Wally in the Box is here. Mike Burke's on a train listening to us. I think Kev said he saw, he's saying that he saw Beck and, and Vaughn. Good God. Dave saying page not found. Well, Dave, uh, go back and, and hit that. Looking for questions here. What we got? How gear this? That's a that's a pretty anti five watt world. I like that. Uh, who's your favorite guest besides Jeff? <laughs> it's my favorite guest. I'm actually um, looking forward to some guests that I'm setting up. I really enjoyed having Ben Adrian on from Line 6 and uh, just because Ben is so cool. And he's really, he runs the team, the modeling team. And uh, we're going to have him on, I'm going to have him on um, next month. I think he's going to be on a live stream when I'm overseas. Um, and uh, he's one of my favorite guests. Um, and then I'm looking forward to one. So I'm going to keep that, you know, in, in my, in my hand right now, but um, yeah, yeah, Jeff, David, I mean, you know, it, the, you have the most fun when you have your friends on Zach. Uh, we had some, I've had some great streams with Zach. I'm going to drag Lyle on here. I'm going to have Dan and Mick from the pedal show on. Um, we, we followed each other both. We all started about the same time. Scrolling for questions. Marion saw Led Zeppelin, their last show. I think you put that in the comments, or unless somebody else was at that show, because, man, that's the coolest. That's kind of like people look at me like I'm 150 years old when I tell them I saw Miles Davis twice, if they even know who Miles Davis is.
people are giving me good advice. I, maybe you guys can start emailing me restaurant suggestions in Barcelona. I talked a lot about guitars and gear. What if the house was burning? What albums would you grab? Um, 2010, I got divorced and I had 800 CDs. And to simplify things, or maybe to help me kind of self-therapy my way through it, I digitized them all. And then I sold them all. So we wouldn't have to decide whose albums were whose. Um, and I have to tell you that I don't, I haven't listened to a lot of them again. And then about three years ago, I went back and, um, and got some, I don't have any rare music. I don't have any rare albums. I actually toted Rick's album collection around from when he was a kid. Uh, at one point he just was, you know, like traveling with bands and stuff when he was in his early thirties, when he was doing billionaire and stuff. And he gave me his records. And then I'm like, if you ever want these back, whatever. And then he did take them back. I actually shipped them to him in Atlanta, you know, at some point when he could actually afford it again. Um, the album, the first album I rebought on CDs, um, actually, I kept one CD. I kept Trick of the Tail by Genesis. That was the only CD I had. And then um, the second one I bought was Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. And then Pat Metheny Trio, I think, uh, was the next one I bought. Uh, I, you know, can you, can Ish sell stuff for you? Um, I think Ish does commission work. I think they do sell stuff for people all the time on commission. Um, but commission, you know, pretty standard commission. You could check with them, but it's pretty standard to commission is, is 30%. So you got to really take a serious look at how much time, um, you're going to save. <laughs> Declan, good to see you, Declan. Uh, I don't know if that was your only guitar. I guess that would count 50,000. I'm not sure any of us want to sit down and figure out how much we have in the guitars we have. You know, we, we can laugh at the 50,000, but if you collect them for a long time, is it okay while I <laughs> listen while I purchase? Yes, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, that's, that's the spirit overwhelming server, the server. That's right. Kane. Kane owns one of my Strandbergs, actually, with three pickups in it. I called it the John Cordy. Um, and, and I just was hoeing out, and it was at a time when Kane was actually visiting, and he got to play it, and then I reached out to him. And so that lives in Florida, and he gigs it all the time, which makes me really happy. Uh, come on, guys, questions, questions here. Oh, you know what? It's time for it's time for the ad. Or I'm way behind, too, huh? I'll see you guys are talking to each other now. Uh, I've got a question here. Let me do my, um, my Patreon spot. Uh, Patreon is letting me build a more close knit sub community from within the world of five watt world because it's, uh, it's founder was a musician. First building community tools is his top priority. Sometimes I worry and I hear it from people that are in the software business that they worry that he's sort of leveraging the company for the good of musicians to edit the expense of it being a successful company financially. Um, there's something I love about that too, even to the point where I'm not sure if it's going to keep going. I, and I like that it's being controlled, that it isn't being controlled by YouTube. I could have my membership created in YouTube, um, but then there wouldn't be a whole bunch of things I can do that I can do in Patreon. They're actually adding the ability to do um, videos over there, though they don't have it sorted out yet. I still release, if you're at the $10 or a month or a higher level, you get to see the videos a day early. And so I can do that. I actually just started publishing these on a second channel that I've always had called Five Watt Works. Um, there's almost nothing over there. There is some music of mine over there, but um, if, if you feel if a need. Um, anyway, YouTube's given me this platform, and I'm very grateful this, for this platform and a direct way to reach out to all of you. Um, but I like Patreon that it lets me step to the side and have a direct connection with people. And I'm in there every day. And I get, you know, especially when a new video comes out, I have a lot of direct interaction with people that are there. Um, there are Three levels of membership, the five watt world, five, 10 and $50 a month at $50 a month at $10 a month. You see the videos early at $50 a month. I schedule a monthly video call with you. If you want to uh, talk about anything you're interested in, I, I have uh, one of the guys that I've talked to is uh, Dan and uh, his partner has dubbed my stories about conversations with Dan. He's dubbed them anecdotes. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh, I guess, I guess she's in charge of the dad jokes in that house. So I don't know why they have to be dad jokes to be corny. Um, anyway. So if you can afford that, and it's a really direct way to support what I do here. And, you know, uh, once you've topped out on T-shirts and hoodies and beanies, 
There's always Patreon and love to have you. All right, let's get back to some questions here. Guppy Bill is here. Guppy is doing a big push on his uh, on his playing and his recording. We're thrilled for Guppy. All right, KT wants to know, do you have the, do, what do I think of the boost feature on the RevStar? Usable or not usable? Um, I have a lot of questions right now. Let me see how this sounds and we'll just turn it on. Uh, tilt the camera a little bit. Hmm. I wonder if you guys can hear that. I'm going to scroll to the end so you guys can give me audio feedback. Wow, I'm way behind. So that's just the bridge pickup with the with it rolled off. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> Eights. <laughs> Whoa, so we can hear it and I can play badly. So that's the guitar. It's turned up too proud. If I'm getting distortion, let me know. Um, and then the boost, the transformer, is really darkens it. And I don't really see it. Um, if I turn this down, I think it'd be useful for jazzy tones. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, let me go back to where we are here. <laughs> I got some good ones there. Jared is warmed up now. I think I did say happy birthday to Robin already. Happy birthday, Robin. Happy birthday to anybody that's on the channel. I'll always do a birthday. I'm not gonna sing. You know, that's really a gift in itself. So, uh, how far back did I miss, guys? Uh, um, a while, and I actually have talked on the phone, but we haven't talked about this. I don't think. Um, I was able to tame the Princeton Tone Master to a point. Where I use it as a wet amp setup in a wet dry with a, a tube amp as my main dry amp, both my GA40 that I built from a kit, but now right now in the living room is a Revstar D25, which was an amp that was, they tell me, influenced by my way back when uh, Rev um, D20 video. Uh, so um, Uh, I don't know. I don't have the connection, Cameron, that Zach has with Mr. Paisley uh, to visit Nacho. Um, and I've played a Nacho and I was absolutely blown away, though Jeff's played a bunch. And I guess they're not all uh, incredible, you know, which they're guitars. Uh, every guitar is not incredible for everybody. Hi Watt Amps is on my list, obviously. Let me make sure that I am. Oh, Ken Major is saying best bread. Ken lives right up the road. Ken might actually get bread for me. Bread making channel, five watt grain. I don't have uh, time to do this channel. I don't have experience playing old Laney's. I apologize. Uh, they Now they've got like a 30 water. I'm not an Egginator authority. Oh, this is good. This is now, now we're getting into. <laughs> Where, where I don't know stuff. Good. Uh, I have, 
I have never played a left-handed gu guitar strung right-handed. Uh, I have owned 12 strings, both electric and acoustic, and uh, like them, but I don't currently own one. I was looking at a Violette um, guitar. It's a 12-string guitar, but it's match pairs, sort of between a guitar and a mandolin that uh, Tim likes. I thought it'd be cool to have for the acoustic gig. They're little things. They're kind of cool, but I haven't bought one yet. Hmm. The merch link is not good. Uh, maybe, a, I don't know. Uh, Lyle said he's not having problems in the browser. Uh, Veronica, go to, just go to um, fiveworld.com and that link should be fine. And if not, you can do um, spring, S-P-R-I-N-G, spring five watt world, and it'll take you to my store. Uh, I haven't played, I haven't played lap and I have never played a resin. Well, that's not true. I mean, I played a resonator for like five minutes in a guitar store, but I've never had one. Uh, I don't have flats on any of my guitars that currently, but I have had them on guitars in the past. Okay. Now we are back to that question. So the, the boost, I, I would use it for jazz stuff, but it's because it's kind of dark. The transformer darkens it a lot. Uh, let's get back to some questions here. <laughs> Lyle says he got a pasta machine. Okay, here we go. A guitar that you regret selling or not purchasing. Um, I think there's only one that I, re it's a regret not purchasing. I really do think that all, everything I've ever had go through my hands feels replaceable. Um, I mean, I did the, when I did the video, the live stream on mental health, I talked about how in 2016, I spent, you know, like five months in the hospital and you come out of that going, yeah, everything's replaceable, you know, cause your life, you're replaceable to a certain extent and to a certain extent, completely not, of course. Um, but uh, I kind of came out of that and sold a lot of gear and it's really what sent me down this road on the channel. Um, I did, but once upon a time, I did walk into a guitar store in, uh, Burkhan, North Carolina. And I looked over on the wall. I mean, the whole length of the store, I looked at the end of the wall and there was a, um, deep red, like, you know, Pete Townsend red, um, calling CL with humbucking pickups. I mean, they were low wind Imperials. I remember cause it was the first time I experienced either a Collings or that. And I think it was three grand. And this was like, phew, 2006 and I didn't buy it. I called him about three months later, it was gone. And then I saw it on eBay and the guy had bought it and he wasn't playing it enough. It was also pretty light for a single cut. And then I didn't buy it then either. So that guitar is gone. So, uh, so that's the only one that really kind of sticks in my memory. Uh, the guys, <laughs> the guys at blue chip, um, man, I can't imagine what a spatula would cost. Uh, they will, I don't have it. I don't have one here. Um, does it have my logo? It just says five watt world on it. This one just says, oh, it doesn't even say that. This one is the one that my kid gave me that just has my name there. Um, the, you can get these with a logo, the guys at blue chip, if you tell them that I said so. Um, they'll make them with the logo. If you have to have one, get the extra, spend the extra five dollars to get one. Uh, some of these questions I did on the way by. Hmm. Do you recommend that guitar should learn some Bach and why? When I was at Ithaca College, um, the, well, actually, I was at Binghamton. I had just left Ithaca College and was working at Binghamton University. And Steve Brown knew that I was trying an aspiring jazz guitar player. And he offered to have me come back for his one week jazz workshop for free because he needed rhythm players. He had like a whole bunch of people signed up to play saxophone. Um, so I did. And he said, you know, I said, I'll do it if you put me in like who's who's teaching. And Miriam McPartland was teaching. And um, if you remember Marion McPartland, she, had, she was the longest running jazz piano show, jazz radio show on public radio ever. And at the final concert, Steve and Marion McPartland did a, ja a jazzed up thing of Bach. And I had played Bach, you know, as a classical guitar, as a minor, a music minor in college and playing classical guitar. I had played some. Um, it's a great exercise. I think it's a great meditation. 
even if even if I think that it's hard not to calm down. The resolutions are so satisfying. Um, the voice leading is so perfect that it's uh, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody that there's that you have to do anything a certain way. Ooh, you should ask Rick. Hayden West says, advice for a lifelong classical double basis transitioning out of the university into the more conventional rock and jazz gigging economy. Um, boy, that's a tough one. I mean, it, it's the same everywhere. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice, I'm actually going to write, one of the things I'm going to do when I'm away is I'm going to write the course that I have outlined called uh, YouTube for Musicians. And it really is kind of a guide to the reality that you have to be your own. I did a video stream a while ago and I outlined some of this, but the reality that you have to have so many streams of income to be able to have a life as a creative person. And I'd say that what you're describing is, is right on target with that. I have 11 different things that feed me little bitty streams of income that make it possible for me to do this full time. Um, I couldn't do it full time otherwise. <laughs> Tolkien or Lewis. Um, I was a big Tolkien nerd, but I have read all the Narnia books when I was doing that thing. Um, I haven't read his philosophy that much. Um, a little, little too like my upbringing. Um, Page or Beck? That's Beck. And Ford or Carlton? That's Ford. But, but thanks for asking. Skylar Meredith, uh, love the show. Thanks, man. Uh, curious about your thoughts on your progression. You mean my progress as in most music from least gear? Um, the big challenge for me, to be perfectly honest, is to free up enough time to play guitar more um, and to realize my limitations. I think one of the things that holds a lot of us back is that um, we think we have to do it a set way, a certain way. Um, and if you look around, people that you probably look up to as creative people didn't follow the rules. So for example, I'm, I'm slightly mildly dyslexic. So, and I'm a guitarist, so I'm a bad you know music reader. Um, I can read, but not great. And I've never learned to read tab. I'm not of that tab generation. I didn't grow up with YouTube. I'm an ear player mostly, but I'm trying to get new chords in my ears. I played some of them. They're, you know, Eric Johnson, y kind of things over that drone. Um, and I'm getting those from John Cordy, you know, from John's videos. So, um, Finding time to do that uh, is the big challenge. And I think that the balance uh, is a is a thing um, that we're all they're all chasing and and doing it the way it feels right to you is key. Uh, Gary says he got to the store. No problem. There's a Miles Davis. <laughs> That's an excellent question, Art. Is it hard for a YouTuber to file taxes? Uh, when I found my new tax accountant and I told him I was a musician, he looked at me in great fear in his eyes. Um, but I was a university registrar for, um, I worked in higher education. I was a university, I worked in registrar's work from 94 till I retired in 2016 at the tender age of 56. And um, I, I'm a pretty tidy guy um, and I have spreadsheets for everything. Um, the best advice I can give you, um, is any musician should do it this way. They should have a, you should have a credit card and a bank account that are only the business, only the business. And you should have a credit card or something else and a bank account that is only your personal life. So all I have to do is go in there and, um, and that and PayPal, I can see all this, all the streams of income either flow to that bank account or they flow to PayPal. And so I can see the streams. And then the credit card is every expense. I mean, every expense um, that the business has is all through the single place. And if you do those two things, then doing taxes is not hard. But thanks for reminding me that I have to do that before I leave town next week or two weeks from now. Uh, Victor, yeah, of course there's shorty jacks. Uh, Switchcraft makes long and short jacks. Um, so you should be able to get that. Hey, Scott, Mr. Bogfoot. 
How many pro guitar players actually know how to set up their instruments? That's an excellent question. Jeff would probably be the best one to answer that. <laughs> Recently, I realized that I have enough guitars and gear and it's sort of disorienting. What do you direct funds to that is music related? Wow. Um, I made a video about stopping guitar shopping because I realized it had been a lifelong hobby that I had been shopping for guitars from the time I was 14 until I was 57, probably. And I still guitar shop. People tease me when I buy like this Revstar to, to make a video about or to kind of check it out. I had a couple of video ideas that I could make with a guitar and then I'll, you know, got a good price and I could flip it for a good price, just turn it back over again um, and make some content in the meantime. Um, so, uh, right. Uh, I think you have me confused with Rick. I did not interview Billy Corgan. Not yet. I uh, answered the question about lap steel. Hmm. Ah, Joel was offering that as a big turning point for electric guitar, the multi-track. Seems to me that there's always special music vibes in upstate New York. Is that accurate? Is there a healthy underground music scene in your area these days? Uh, there is a good music scene here. There was a great music scene in upstate New York when I was a teenager. Um, Rick, Rick and I talk about this all the time because we were pretty close together. The music program in my high school was amazing. Uh, and there was an Eastman grad who ran it. Um, the East, having the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, um, you know, like Buffalo had a killer jazz and R&B scene. I mean, Rick James is from Buffalo, for God's sakes. There's just some amazing players have come out of upstate. I think it's probably, um, I don't know about Newfoundland, but Iceland seems to be turning out musicians because there's nothing else to do in the wintertime. So uh, anyway. Krenar Kilku is here. Good to see you, Krenar. RK says, future show, guitars I wish I still had. No, not me. I'm, I'm good. That would be a good show. It'd be good for somebody else to talk about it. Uh, did you say you own a GA40 amp? So uh, I built a GA40 clone that Dan Lurie designed. It's kind of a combination of a 58 and a 60, I think, GA40. Uh, I built it because David Grissom had said in an interview that he used it on his first record. So I thought all the great tones on that record were, a lot of them were the GA40. And it's a reasonable wattage, you know, it has, a, has an output transformer, it's the size of a walnut. So it's not a ton of wattage it's putting out. That's a pair of six V6s. So it's maybe, I don't know, Lyle should tell us, maybe 12 watts. Um, I don't know how many, what the voltage is. Um, and so it's funny because then I got to interview David Grissom here on the channel. And you can go, I think it's the first interview where we're talking about guitar or amp. And the really funny thing is that, um, <laughs> the really funny thing is David's like, yeah, I used it on this tune. I'm like, well, what else do you use? He goes, oh, I used an old Marshall for the whole record. <laughs> so I have one. It's the only, it's one of two amps that I own. Uh, that I still have, that I built, I should say. Uh, Shapeshifter says, have I ever played a Tornado? I have not. They're very cool. Uh, I I, I don't really do reviews, Veronica. And um, honestly, I'm a really, really slow reviewer. Like I, I had this Revstar here for a very short time before I talked about it. That's so unlike me. Um, and the guys that they, you know, I bought this myself. The guys at Yamaha were like, we well, couldn't believe you talked about it already. I'm like, well, and the, and the live did good because I think a lot of people are interested in it. Um, it's a very cool guitar. Um, I agree with Lyle that the neck is a little, a little modern for me. Um, but I don't really buy gear to review 
unless it's things that I think I'm going to use myself. It's I have a I have a, a Dr. Z Z Master, which is an amazing amplifier, and I I actually going to probably have Z on the live stream because he's just a, such a cool guy, and the and the the show is just I mean the show the the company is just such a fascinating history, um, but it's too big for me. So like I, I tend to lean into the Princeton size amps. Um, and that's what I've got right now. So that's what I'll be playing probably for the best better part of the year. Um, 5150 on a specific amp. I, um, hmm, the Joe Barisi secret weapon amp or Rick, Rick's asked me about this. It's on the list. The 5150 is on the list. Um, so I don't know when I'll make it. <laughs> it's funny. You know, there was a time when I had like this overgrown soul patch. I used to, um, I used to ban people for getting on me about my facial hair. It's like, uh, how about the videos? Anyway, um, there's a, there's a good, there's a guy that, um, uh, that did a video for like Esquire or GQ or somebody about trimming your beard. That's the best thing I could tell you. It's like, like go watch that video about that. Cause it's it, like, that's all I, that's all I know. That's all I got on that topic. Where'd the hour go? But I considered doing a video about what the used car market was like back in the day and what it's turned into now. You mean in a post reverb world, what the guitar world is. Um, that's interesting. I'm not sure I'm qualified to make that. Although I do have a pretty big reverb, you know, score from, uh, from all the years of buying and selling. Shub Nagurath says, what do you think the remaining frontiers for electric guitar? What kind of innovations progress do you expect? I, you know, I am just thrilled at uh, the tremendous amount of in, uh, influence, uh, influence and interest that Ola Strandberg has created. Um, they're so interesting and they're, they sound pretty different and unique. And, um, and I just, he just, now he's got this essential guitar out and that's gotten a ton of press and a lot of people are interested in it. David Barber was just asking me about it the other day. Um, they, they asked me, the guys asked me if I wanted to be part of the launch and I, I don't really do that. I said, you know, when they all come back and you got one that's scratched or something, send it to me so I can check it out. Um, um, yeah, Guppy. So Marion McPartland uh, signed a record, signed her, I bought her most recent CD and she wrote on it, what a saint she was. She, she wrote on it, uh, Dear Keith, Thanks for letting me hear you play because I played, you know, in her workshop for the whole week. So have you met us Jones, Bubasa, all real easy stuff because that's where I was. Thanks, Art. Thanks for the top chat. Vista Cycling Tuscany. Motorbikes or push bikes, Keith. Uh, I am going to get there. Maybe next year, the month off. Off. I'm not really off. Uh, maybe I'll come to. We'll come to Italy next year. Lyle's uh, preaching the gospel of likes. Hit the likes and subscribe, boys and girls. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Fluff is here. Riffs, beers, and gears, ladies and gentlemen. The master fluff is in the house. Uh, fluff wants to know, um, you know, I always buy the darkest denim I can get and then put the wear on it. It's kind of like, I like to buy really clean guitars when I can. And then, okay. I, I keep them pretty clean. <laughs> I'm okay with a ding guitar getting ding, but I'm a little tidy. I'm tidy. I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, I think the acid wash thing is kind of a slur on my age. If I have to admit that, you know, <laughs> That's a good question. Is there going to be a guitars of Norman Blake? Wow. Um, I actually had somebody send me a whole list of articles about the Clarence White, Tony Rice D28. And I think that would make a really cool one um, uh, video, really cool video. Uh, we talked about this earlier, Greg. You must not have been here yet. I, I laughed already. I laughed hard and I I'm done laughing hard already. Just playing bass is trying to uh, moderate here. <laughs> I 
All right, I'm running out of time. Oh, this is pretty funny. The scene in upstate New York was, is because of the great, great house of guitars. Discuss among yourselves. Um, that's interesting because Rick and I, of course, used to both go there when we were kids. And Andy Babiuk, uh, who you know now owns his own store and did uh, a whole bunch of books that I you know swear by. They're Bibles, the the Rolling Stone book, the Beatles books. Um, he was a he was a salesman at the at the House of Guitars. I was like he was like one of the guys I was trying to talk into let me play a Les Paul, and uh, not not understanding that it was the New Orleans years and I needn't have tried so hard. So. Um, Guys, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I have to thank you for making this so much fun for me today. I was a little nervous about filling the hour and I needn't have been because I, I don't always get through your questions and I absolutely love this back and forth. I had so much fun. Um, so uh, I'm going to have John play us out with that uh, good old Q&A intro thing that I had. Um, if uh, Victor, I hope you saw that uh, comment from Lyle. And uh, I will be here next week, and I'll I'll be back into the into the rambling uh, com content of some kind or another. All right. Thanks again. Aloha and mahalo there, and I'll see you next week.